Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to yet another solar based video. Uh, now that we're three months in to ownership of solar panel systems and a home battery system all integrated, I wanted to take you through kind of our experience so far, how it's changing through the months, what the production has been um, and our usage. Now what I will do with this video towards the back end when we go through um, how it's worked for us I'm going to split it out one solely the home and then one with the home and the EV charging so what I've done with the home uh, just a bit of a heads up is I've removed all the home charging of the electric car and um, just to give you a true representation of what's been produced what's been exported and what's being used by the home and how you could probably apply that to your own situation. Um, with this series, what I'm trying to do is give a bit of information and background on how it works and how you can apply it to your home, your situation, and uh, is it worth it for you? Um, as I've got them, it's absolutely worth it for us, so I may as well share that, that information with you. So what we're gonna do is get cracking and I'll talk you through how our solar panel system has worked for us over the last three months. So if you haven't already, go and check out the videos uh, that I've done previously that gives a much more in-depth um, overview of what the system is that we have. But just for a quick uh, brief overview, um, we have an eight kilowatt peak system and that is done with 20 400 watt solar panels. Eight of them are south facing, 12 of them a west face then we have a 9.7 kilowatt battery and um, that brings all that together and stores the energy uh, so we can use it at a later time we then have a five kilowatt inverter all that equipment is solar edge except the panels which are perlite delta 400 watt panel so as mentioned we're three months in now we had the solar panel system installed back in august the second of august uh, it was commissioned to be precise um, we're obviously now in November 2022 um, and we've got quite a drastic difference in what the production is within the house. Now before we had solar panels installed it was very hard to judge how it was going to be, what our production will be. I've never had them before um, and does where we are having them on the house affect production throughout the year. Now I covered that a bit in the lessons learned video. Now I'll pop a bit of a graph up here, um, now I'm not one for marketing, I try not to be fooled by it so I don't always believe it when I'm sent it. Now the installation for me were done by Oval Renewables, fantastic set of guys, did a fantastic job exactly to what I wanted. Now when they quoted the job um, I was given a big bump of information and I read it cover to cover numerous times. But in there was a graph detailing how they estimated, not necessarily oval, but how Solar Edge estimated our production to be throughout the year. And as you can see, um, it starts you know January, February, March time on a gentle incline, all the way to around May, and then we peak off June, July, August, start dropping off in September again, and that gave you a rough idea um, based on where the solar panels were. Now. The graph I'll put up now is our production so far. As you can see, and I've got it on my iPad here, just uh, bear with me. So we started in August and our peak production was about 790 for the whole uh, kilowatt hours for the whole of August. And then we start dropping off. Now, it's worth noting at this point, in September, we had two weeks on holiday. I think that is not demonstrated correctly on here if we was at home um, and I think between October and August that graph would be slightly up because we'd be using more of it rather than be limited at the the export and the battery capacity um, don't want to get too much in depth of that but um, we could utilize more of the production um, if we was using the production if that makes sense so as you can see we've got a gentle decline um, as we exit summer and move into autumn. Now to delve into the figures a bit more, now this is the point where I've separated out home only and then home and an electric car. So I've removed all the car charging 
from these figures. So starting with August, our house used 309 kilowatt hours. Pretty, I've looked back at our history and that seems pretty normal, around 300 to 330 per month. Now the solar, which is quite interesting, we produced 779 kilowatt hours for the whole of August. That means, and this is a theoretical because this is not what happened in our situation, that we would have exported 470 kilowatt hours back to the grid. So we are producing 250% more energy than what we used in August. Now, this is where it's key that you utilize all the production or as much as the production as possible. So to, to use 309 kilowatt hours costs, you'd be looking about 105 pound at the current price cap of 34p a kilowatt for the home usage. Now, just to put that into perspective, we exported theoretically 470 kilowatt hours that's only worth £18.80. So it's key that you utilise as much of the production as possible. Now, touching on the same point um, a while ago as why we went for this size system, was as we progress into October, November, December, when you've got shorter days, less production, we want a lot of little production. Um, so even if the solar panels are doing 50 watts each, 20 of 50 watts is better than 10 of 50 watts um, so that's that theory so yeah just to recap august 309 kilowatt hours we used we produced 779 kilowatt hours moving into september noting we was on holiday for two weeks and this is probably another interest point to touch on the solar panels produce 506 kilowatt hours the house utilised 237 of those and we exported 269 theoretical kilowatt hours. Um, so again, September 214% more production than actual home usage. And then as we move into October, and this is where I really saw a drastic difference in production um, to home usage, um, and not necessarily the first two weeks of August of October, it was more the second two weeks where it really declined. Um, days got, you know, the sun was lower um, and it just weren't producing. So the home used 383 kilowatt hours, quite a lot, but still we, we're probably looking at now the fires starting to go on. Um, we have a kick space heater in the kitchen, um, so that's blowing. Um, a bit like a heater um, but the solar panels produced only 360 kilowatt hours but saying that 94% of our home usage come from solar panels so a bit of a comparison there so August 779 kilowatts produced October end of October 360 so you can see it's halved um, pretty much just yeah just over half um, is the difference with the solar panel. So to put a monetary figure um, to what we've just gone through on the monthly um, production based on home only, we would have saved based on the current price cap at 34p. So for August, we would have saved £86. September, £69. But remember, we was on holiday. And then October, our usage has gone up. So we've been able to utilise more of the production, £131 we've saved. So that gives a total of £313 in a three month period we would have saved by having solar panels and a home battery system. It's not masses of money, um, but I think what we've highlighted there is it's key that you utilise as much of the production, which you'll see in the next portion of the video where we start looking at how it differs when you've got an electric vehicle. To touch on now, how has our solar and battery system gone? Now we have an electric car, it's quite a high mileage electric car, and then we have the, the base home usage as well, which I've covered 
a few minutes earlier. This will be a bit more accurate, um, and but it's very hard to put a monetary value on it. So I can, I'll try and do it basing it on 34p a kilowatt. Now, if you do have an electric car, it's very likely you have a cheap overnight rate, and I'll just touch on that a bit later in the video. So, August, we used 1,092 kilowatt hours. That's what the house demanded. That is the home at 309, and then the remainder coming from charging the car. Now, in August, I was able to charge it in the day sometimes if i was in the house you know sat this sunday or working from home um, and we managed to utilize 622 kilowatts of the 779 that we produced in august now 57 percent of our house demand coming from um the solar panel system now that doesn't seem sound like much but putting a monetary value on 622 kilowatts is £218 saving for that month. If we haven't, hadn't have had solar panels, that is what it would have cost us at 34p a kilowatt. That is a lot of money. Now, September, again, as noted, we was on holiday, so there weren't much charging. Uh, we still used 514 kilowatts. Um, 249 of that coming from solar, 48% is what that was and as we move into October and as I've alluded to earlier in the video it, it's really starting to decline at this point so again we're back to normal we're not on holiday in October the house and the car demanded a thousand and forty three kilowatt hours however the solar only managed to utilize 283 kilowatt hours of the 360 that was produced that's 27 percent that would come from solar and again it doesn't sound like much but when you put a monetary value on it it's a hundred pound saving although we're down to 27 percent you know saving on our bill because our bill is quite high because of the car demand um it's actually you know physically a large monetary value now as we move into november and um, we're now on the 6th of november um, and I pretty much can't charge my car at all. So we're moving into a situation, we're having to buy into the grid. The house is still covered by the solar panels. Um, I reckon we're about 80% of uh, the home demand coming from solar. Um, but the car is, it's very difficult. You, you've got a very short window. And what we're trying to do is because we have a battery, we want the production in the day to go into the battery so that the home can use it at night. And then what's happening is I set my car to charge overnight during a cheap window, four hour window, um, and then the battery will drain into the car. That's not ideal, but I don't mind the battery going into the car because it's a, it, you know we're still using the power. We've also set up recently um, that the battery charges to about 50% during the cheap window and what that does is that covers the period of time again i covered this in the last video um, up to about 9 a.m until the production so what i want to do now is kind of cover where do i see will be in the future now i think we're going to have some difficult a difficult few months um, mainly because of the car if it was just the house i'd be very comfortable that um, that we're pretty pretty much covered and on average as over the year um, I think we'd claw back what we'd be buying in from the grid um, in, in that sense. Now with the car um, and our situation we're actually at about a saving of £400 and I'm not going to lie the majority of that come from August. Um, we're starting to struggle it is what it is it's winter you know we we've had this installed at the end of summer we've moved into autumn and as we approach winter, it's just going to get worse. Now, going back to the graph that I was given um, at the quote stage, we are pretty much following the trend. Um, you know, we did good production in August. It's reduced, probably September's a bit less, but October's about spot on. So if I relate this back to how it's going to be, you know, we're in for some good months in May, June, July. There's going to be more than our August production in theory as per this so it's key that i utilize that power as much as possible 
Um, I charge my car as much as possible in the day. Um, we change as approach to things. So, you know, on a weekend, go out in the morning, get the house battery charged, and then get the car on charge and get it topped up. Because for every kilowatt hour we're using, you know, we if we export it, we are exporting it at 4p a kilowatt. Yeah, if we've got to buy it in from the grid, because of the tariff I'm on, it's actually costing us 40p a kilowatt, kilowatt. So that's 36p difference that if I send it back to the grid, I'm losing out on 36p potentially. So we're also changing as approach with different things is um, our hot water tank. We've now got a smart immersion heater controller so that if we see when we're out and about that the, the house battery is fully charged, then we can switch on the smart immersion heater to heat our hot water. Now that currently is 150 litres that's not being heated by gas that's costing us quite a bit more. Um, at 10 p a kilowatt, 25 kilowatt boiler, you know, it, it adds up. So that's another saving there that we can use. So we're trying to utilise as much of the power as possible. Now we're going into winter. If the battery's charged and we've got a bit of excess and we're at home, we'll put the fire on. That it's all this different little mindset that helps you utilize as much of the power as possible. So yeah, I think quite a difficult video to explain to be fair, but I think it's clear to see that currently on averages, the home is about 167% coming from solar. So we're still in, a, in more production than home usage. And then with the car, we're about 58% which again, for a high mileage car, I don't think that's bad at 58%. I do charge it on about, but I probably, you know, charge about three and a half thousand miles at home um, on that. So to have 58% on average come from solar production, uh, I'm pretty impressed with. For the rest of the year, hopefully we can maintain that or increase it slightly, but my figure was 50% and that was our sort of lowest level that we'd go to um, that solar panels would be worthwhile. Hopefully so. I've been clearing what I've said. Quite a difficult video to explain and I need to edit it now um, and see uh, if it mashes up or, or correct. But um, yeah, please do drop any comments down below and I'll try and answer them the best I can. We are only three months in, um, so I can only tell you what our experience is so far. Um, but please do give it a thumbs up if it's helped. And um, please do make sure you check out the other solar panel videos um, just to help you uh, if you're thinking of considering them uh, to help reduce your bills, reliance on gas and other bits and bobs that we're, uh, we're, we're struggling with at the moment. So please do give it a thumbs up and please make sure you subscribe for more videos to come uh, on this nature and other DIY based um, videos. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.